had to put on a short fracture walker or pneumatic ankle walker. Fracture walkers come in different sizes, I mean, pediatric sizes all the way through. Some, of, some brands offer a 2XL. They also come in different heights. This is an ankle walker. It's, it's also referred to as a short walker. And then there's a, there's a tall walker. These are for ankle fractures as well. But today, um, we're going to show you how to use the pneumatic ankle walker by Coreflex. Um, as you can see, it has, a, it has a little air pump in there that has an air bladder, and we'll show you how to use that here in a minute, but um, it's pretty low profile. So this is a size small, so basically we just determine um, by the size of our patient what size we'll choose. Um, the, my lovely patient here is going to be in a size small. So, And then the other thing I always offer a patient is a fracture sock. Uh, it's not necessary. They can just wear any tall sock that they like. They're ankle walker socks. They come in a pair, and these happen to be 14-inch um, length. So. I always recommend that they wear it directly on their skin or on top of the sock. Uh, you, you don't want to have the, the pants inside the boot if you can help it. All right, so we're going to get this all set up. We're going to take kind of take it apart so that we can put it back together and get a proper fit for the patient. So the liner is actually going to come out. You're going to remove the strap that goes along the uh, right above the ankle. All right, so inside your liner. You have two pads. These pads can kind of be put wherever necessary. They come with some little Velcro tabs. You can put those wherever necessary if it's a section that's bothering a patient. The great thing about the CoreFlex boot is they have these reinforced um, pads also that help to kind of protect the patient from the, the struts of the boot. And, and then you just basically open it up like that. The pump itself has an inflate and a deflate option. So we're going to always make sure that it's fully deflated before we put it on, so that way it allows for lots of room and swelling. You can kind of hear that, how it's letting the air out. Okay, and we're going to have our patient slide. And we want to make sure, you know, obviously the patient's going to be in a little bit of pain. They, they either have a sprain or a strain, maybe they've come out of a cast, maybe this is in lieu of a cast to immobilize them. So they're not really, um, you know, pain-free at this point. So we want to try to be gentle. And so we're going to Put them in the boot, just the liner part, right? The other thing that's important is that we maintain a 90 degree angle. So this is where we want 90 degrees here. If the patient's farther than 90, um, where their plantar flex, this is going to shorten their Achilles tendon and we can have issues long term. So we want our, to do our very best to try to get them at 90 degrees. It's, it's difficult for some patients to do, especially with an acute injury, but you know, that's our goal. So next step, you notice our struts are covered with plastic strips. We keep those on. And then I just use my knee, um, have the patient step on the knee, and then we're going to get her back. Make sure gently push the ankle back so that the heel is flush with the back of the boot. And then also kind of have them step down on you. If, if the patient's too heavy or if this is hard for you to do, you can have it, them do it on the floor or on the stool. And you make sure that they're nice and comfortable. So that your heel all the way down to the bottom of the boot. And you kind of like feel it. Okay. All right. So now we're going to try to slowly get them back up to 90. And that 90 degrees, remember, is going to come here and here. And then once we maintain the 90 degrees, we simply slip off the plastic stirrup strip piece. And then we make sure that our struts are adhered to the boot. Now that the boot is attached to the liner, we need to put on the Velcro strap. So starting with the most distal strap, I always tell people you're going to your toes towards your nose because we want to get that swelling out. We don't want to ever go proximal to distal. That'll have to put all the swelling inside the toes. So this little side note for these little pads, sometimes patients will complain about maybe the straps or this digging, uh, maybe something in here is bothering them. This can be kind of shoved, so to speak, wherever it's needed. Okay, If they don't need it, great. They have two extra pads. So it should be nice and snug. Depending on the fracture, some patients will come in with a foot fracture. You know, obviously we want to keep that a little bit looser on the top of the foot. Um, our goal is to keep this whole ankle um, unit immobilized. And then we have our final strap. This one's going to go right below the, the pump. This is exactly how you would do a tall fracture boot as well. Um, you, you just obviously have more straps. See, in this case, there's three straps. Um, so then and you go nice and snug. Not so tight. Always make sure that the patient can... Um, you know, feel their toes, that it's not getting cold. They'll tell you if it's too tight for sure. And our final step is we're going to inflate the pump. So as you can see, we have an inflate side and a deflate side. 
inflate is pulling clockwise, so we turn all the way until it stops. Now it's ready to accept air. There is um, liners inside the boot, and we'll just do about four or five pumps. Do you start to feel it? So it's three, four, five. And I usually say, as the patient's walking around, some of that air will kind of seep out over time. You only need to do that about once every other day, maybe. Um, some patients, especially young people, just running all around, some of the air might seep out faster. Okay, so there we go. There's our short boot. Remember, this it has a high um, sole, so we make sure that the patient's wearing a flat, comfortable shoe on the opposite foot. Um, and then it, because it has a rocker bottom, it is made to walk heel to toe. So when the patient's walking, instead of bringing their foot around to the side, they're going to walk heel to toe. Would you mind show, modeling that for us, Zoe? So. To remove it, very simple, all you do is pull the straps off, remembering to fold the Velcro back on itself so you don't, you can kind of maintain the life of the Velcro. And then she pops right out of it and then there you go, all better.